So let's just revise what we had discussed of this chapter, and then we'll continue reading. Okay. So this chapter itself, the title itself suggests that we're not afraid to die if we can all be together. It emphasizes on teamwork. It emphasizes that if we are there sharing our problems or there's someone to help us out in our difficult times, then we will be able to get out of that difficulty in a better, easier way. Right. So this is uh, what uh, the chapter here it is about. It talks about team spirit. It talks about courage. It talks about determination. So do you remember what we had read in this chapter? Yes. Do you remember? OK, so let's just revise here. Yes. So what uh, was the purpose of this voyage that the author wanted to undertake? What was the purpose of the voyage? Yes. Come, let me get your answers quickly. Hurry up. Let me see how many of you were attentive last time. So what was the purpose of the voyage? It was to replicate the voyage which had been undertaken by Captain Cook, right? So here it is Gordon Cook and Alan East. So they are the writers. And uh, so Gordon Cook, he wanted to replicate the voyage which was undertaken by Captain Cook, right? And uh, pay a tribute to him and follow in his footsteps, the problems that he faced, the difficulties that he faced. And for that, he had made a lot of preparation. So how he tells it uh, for so many years, he had been honing his seafaring skills. He was developing them. He was perfecting his, yes, so 16 years. Absolutely correct. And uh, so he had been perfecting that. But, you know, like, of course, no matter how much we prepare, so when it comes to nature, at some, you know, at times that uh, we just uh, give up, right? The extent of uh, the damage that is caused or the fury of the nature here, the problems that are caused by nature here. So, right, in spite of our preparedness, we are, uh, I would say, never fully prepared, right? So like quite an ironical statement, right? So what happened? He made preparation. What was the name of the boat they traveled on? What was the name of the boat? Who's going to tell me? Yes, it was Wave Walker. Very good. And what was special about that boat? What was special about it? Yes. What was special? That it was a wooden Hulled boat, yes. And of course, he has given the dimensions and the measurements of that. Why? Because he wanted to replicate the same situation which Captain Cook. And yes, it is. He's admiring the, the courage of that person. That so many years ago, when there were not so many facilities, things were not so developed, how he had the courage to undertake this voyage. So who all are there accompanying the, the author? Who all are there with him? His wife and his children. And yes, as he starts sailing from Plymouth, England, then yes, his family was there, very right. And so he takes two crewmen along with him. Yes, so Larry and Herbie. And yes, why do you think he took these crewmen with him to help him? Because it's very difficult here, you know, like he was maybe the only person who was brave enough. Yes, although his wife, when we read that she's assisted him and she's been there with him neck to neck, handling all the emergencies and the problems that happened on the way. So he had these two men who were trained sailors and they would help him in case of an emergency, in case of a problem. So And that they did, as we have read about it, isn't it? Right. So, yes. So. All this we have read. And then what was the situation of the sea? What were the weather conditions? There were these giant waves rising. The wind was also blowing very high. And the captain, he's made preparatory measures. He's, uh, you know, double lashed everything. He's, uh, you know, made, uh, done the safety drill. And he's donned oil skins so as to save himself, right? Yeah, and the gear, protective gear, you can say. But in spite of his preparations, what happened? A huge wave came and it smashed on the deck. What was the damage caused? First of all, was that the captain was thrown overboard, was thrown outside. And then 
as the boat became vertical again it became upright once again the captain came back on the deck of the ship but he was tossed and turned all over the place just like a rag doll and he had a lot of injuries right and as a result of the waves smashing on the deck what had happened what had happened the side of the boat was damaged water was continuously entering it so there is uh, danger of the boat capsizing drowning so immediately they had to start pumping out water right so yes the spare pumps had been also thrown overboard and uh, so they could find a spare pump and now everybody is taking turns but in spite of you know the captain's efforts here he stretched canvas he's tried to do the waterproofing but still little water is entering and which in the long run can be very harmful so what is the decision now taken by the captain of the ship what is the most important decision now he has decided where were they going to sail now they were going to sail to australia so now he has decided that where should he stop first where should he stop first at this group of islands which group of islands are they isle amsterdam what is special about them they are french scientific base but yes what is the problem in finding these islands that in this huge indian ocean they are like two pin pricks what is a pin prick like yeah you get pricked by the pin and it is so tiny right but it hurts yeah but of course he is uh, afraid that he might not be able to find those islands right so what are the dangers now that the captain is there and uh, all the people the weather still not improved right if a huge wave comes if once again the wind keep carry continues blowing like this another huge wave crashes it's going to be very difficult for them to survive secondly he has to take a chance he has to take that risk of finding these group of island clear is it clear till here right yes so right, let's uh, continue with the reading now so what have they decided that yes so he should sail to isle amsterdam right on january 4 after 36 hours of continuous pumping we reached the last few centimeters of water now we had only to keep pace with the water still coming in we could not set any sail on the main mast so yes why continuous pumping just in 36 hours they been very continuously pumping and day and night they taking turns to pump out the water and uh, so like they've come to that level where just uh, you know little bit of water is there's a few centimeters there and what did they have to worry about the water which was continuously entering we could not set any sail on the main mast why could they not do that pressure on the rigging would simply pull the damaged section of the hull apart so we hoisted the storm jib and headed for where i thought the two islands were so a pressure on the rigging what like again yeah, the sails they are there you know the mast is there and uh, so the sails you know they have to be attached to that main mast so if they had been too much of pressure on that what would happen it caused more damage to the boat right so he did not want that to happen and already he saying that there were just a few sections of the cupboards which were there keeping the boat together okay so we hoisted the storm jib what's a storm jib it's a small sail which they keep right uh, on the mast just uh, you know like of course yes so to carry on with the navigation and now so where is he headed for where i thought the two islands were which islands are they looking for they're looking for i amsterdam mary found some corned beef and cracker biscuits and we ate our first meal in almost two days two days they are not thinking about who's hungry who's hurt who's in a problem who's paining no they are constantly worried about saving the boat so if the boat is safe they are right so after two days almost they're going to have their first meal but our respite was short lived respite here the water the relief that they had right at 4 pm black clouds began building up behind us within the hour the wind was back to 40 knots and the seas were getting 
higher. The weather continued to deteriorate throughout the night and day, and by dawn on January 5, our situation was again desperate. So they were the relief that they had, okay, we found out about the water, and the wind is now a little low, and uh, right, so the, you know, the waves have also kind of uh, subsided, so they're not huge waves, but that relief was very short-lived. Again, these black clouds started coming, and the speed of the wind was also rising, right? The seas were getting higher, the waves rising higher, the stormy seas, as they say. The weather continued to deteriorate throughout the night, and by dawn on January 5, our situation was again desperate. So within a couple of days, how they had celebrated Christmas and yes, so with the arrival of the new year, their problems, they began. Okay, students, I've shared a video with you all, right? So hope you watched it and you were able to get some kind of understanding of this chapter, okay? So many videos are there, which uh, are there, you know, like on YouTube regarding this chapter, right? And I've sent you other videos also to show that how high the waves, they rise and how, you know, like it is scary for us to see and how difficult it must be for the sailors to deal with such a situation, right? When I went in to comfort the children, John asked, Daddy, are we going to die? I tried to assure him that we could make it. But Daddy, he went on, we aren't afraid of dying if we can all be together, you and Mummy, Sue and I. So right, so who's Jonathan? The son. Suzanne is the daughter, so the four of them. And yes, so the little boy going and is asking his dad, that see, he's, he's understand, understood. The situation is quite bad. Once again, the storm coming and the waves rising high. So what is going to happen to them, right? That... Yes, that they might die. So the children there, you know, like, of course, here, they are very brave. They have been very brave. They're not talking about the injuries or their fears, but they are sensing that the situation is not good, right? So are we going to die? But daddy, and he said, we aren't afraid of dying if we can all be together, you and mommy, Sue and I. So if we are together, we are not afraid of dying. And just see such a beautiful line, such courageous word. Now, you know where we got the title of the chapter from? Yes, yeah, so who spoke these words? The son. What's the name of the son? Jonathan. What's the name of the daughter? Suzanne or Sue, right? And yes, yeah, so here he's, he's saying that we're not afraid to die if we can all be together. So if we are together, we'll you know, like face any kind of problem. It's about that here. And these little words here, we know that they're very small, right? Six, seven years old. How are they going to help their parents? How are they going to help them come out of this terrible situation that they are in? But yes, their support, their courage, their bravery, it is more than enough. I could find no words with which to respond. Naturally, yeah, yeah, he was speechless. But I left the children's cabin determined to fight the sea with everything I had. And now he is even more determined that, see, the children have so much of faith on me. And they're ready to die also. That never mind if we are not able to come out of this situation, at least we'll die together. If we can't live, we'll die together. And so he's so touched by these words. And now he's decided, I am going to make every effort to protect the weakened starboard side. What is the starboard side, I've told you? Yes, it's generally the side of the boat which is facing the waves, right? So like, yeah, the right hand side. I decided to heave to. So he's trying to change now direction. With the undamaged port hull facing the oncoming wave. So the port hull, the port side. So there's a starboard side and there's the port side. And so now he wants to kind of make little changes so that the waves which are coming don't cause so much of damage already on the side there, which has been facing a lot of huge waves. Using an improvised sea anchor of heavy nylon rope and two 22 liter plastic barrels of paraffin. So improvised sea anchor, what had happened to the anchor? It had been thrown overboard. So now he's making an improvised sea anchor, right? So nylon rope is there and he's using these two 
plastic barrels right so as to give some support to the ship and so as to slow down the movement of the boat and so he could change the direction okay that evening mary and i sat together holding hands as the motion of the ship brought more and more water in through the broken planks we both felt the end was very near so water is entering and once again the weather is becoming very bad they're just sitting together waiting what is going to happen but wave walker rode out the storm and by the morning of january 6 with the wind easing i tried to get a reading on the sextant back in the chart room i worked on wind speeds changes of course drift and current in an effort to calculate our position so see this is what he's saying honing his seafaring skills so it is here learning all this also how to make the calculations how he's there understanding about wind speeds about current about the water bodies through which they have to sail through so he's doing all these calculations and yes so he's a little surprised that they survived the night in the morning right they're alive now he's even determined right so i can't let my children down i am here to save them i have to save them from this terrible condition or situation that they have landed in right and so he's made all the calculations and the least that he could do was to make sure that they were able to locate the two tiny islands which were those two islands the isle amsterdam right the french scientific based so the best i could determine was that we were somewhere in a 150000 kilometers of ocean looking for a 65 kilometer wide island so what do you think the chances are yes so once again looking for these pin pricks now you understand see such a vast ocean and a tiny island so right it's going to be very difficult and because of any wrong calculation if they sail past so they won't be able to locate it or find it again it's going to be difficult for them right naturally changing the course of the boat again and considering the weather conditions while i was thinking so moving painfully joined me the left side of her head was now very swollen and her blackened eyes narrowed to slits she gave me a card she had made what had happened to sue how did she hurt herself yes on the front she had drawn caricatures of mary and me with the words here are some funny people did they make you laugh i laughed a lot as well inside was the message oh how i love you both so this card is to say thank you and let's hope for the best somehow we had to make it so just see beautiful words the amazing courage of the young children right and so is in great pain yeah so what has happened to her she had uh, like on the bunk when she was uh, lying down when the wave crashed and how she hurt her head and her eyes are now narrow slits why because of the swelling which is there on her face but in spite of that the children they're not complaining they're not crying they're not panicking they are there supporting their parents the boy coming and telling them the son jonathan that yes we're not afraid to die we're together so don't worry we're not scared we're with you right then the daughter coming and telling that how much she loves them and naturally when you have such encouragement coming when you have such cooperation coming from these young children do you think you can ever give up hope no you can't and you should not because yes the faith which the children have and yes it's quite right you know we have so much of faith in our parents so whenever things go wrong we automatically look towards them that they are the ones who are going to sort them out they are the ones who are going to set things right isn't it right and this is the behavior of these young children right clear yes so shall we finish the chapter today